Hello all, Game Methuselah. I wanted to discuss with you something today that has been an interesting oxymoron for me for all my 45 years of gaming in tabletop role-playing games. And that's the concept that the games are supposed to be about role-playing, creating spectacular heroes that perform incredible feats of heroism and collect the treasure, defeat the dragon, and win the day. Except there's no experience given out for the role-playing. Now, in original D&D, they gave you the vast majority of your experience by basically what gold you collected. So the idea is the monsters got tougher, they had better treasure after you killed them, and what little experience you got from killing them was completely overshadowed by the gold you acquired. So the more gold you got by killing these creatures, thusly you went up in levels. Now, no one liked that at all. So that quickly ended, and they came up with a very, very detailed list of how experience was given based upon the levels of the creatures and how many creatures and the like. And that is what has lived on in various incarnations today in Dungeons & Dragons and pretty much every other role-playing system out there. You get points for killing things. Now, this leads to a strange development, which I think most of you have seen, which is kind of the murder-hobo theory, that most characters really don't care about gold. You care about two things. You care about killing creatures that give you experience, and the second thing is what cool magical items you get. Now, I've made the statement that I really do believe that magical items are the currency of role-playing games, and I think that in 5th edition Dungeons & Dragons, they've sort of done a disservice by not giving more magical items out at lower levels. It was not uncommon in many of my games, even uh, back 40 years ago, as much as just a few years ago, for at the end of a campaign, our players to have a monogrammed golf bag filled with magical weapons, because treasures are what get people interested in their characters, and in many ways interested in their campaign. But the problem is, there's no reward out there for people to role play. There's no reason for anyone to come up with a really cool campaign character background and maybe do the voices and really get into the motivations of his character, which I know a lot of you really enjoy watching on streaming role-playing campaigns that are being seen on your computers every day. But there's no actual written and quantified rule system for what to do with people who role play. People who want to change the game and they don't want to fight the monsters, they want to negotiate with them and kill them off in peaceful means. And that is something that I've had to, to delve into and use over the years. I love the idea that players would love to negotiate with the monsters and find ways of getting around a situation that you've expected to be a combat, and they turn it into something more diplomatic. Now, we had this situation not too long ago in one of my Twilight of Fae Albion games, where I had three encounters. The first encounter was circumvented, and the other two encounters were negotiated away. And it worked. They got the fulfillment of the mission, they got large mission points that I gave out, role-playing experience points that I gave out, and I gave them victory for defeating the creatures in a peaceful manner. And that's something you should think about when you're developing your game. Milestone works really great because it takes all that pressure off and you don't really have to worry about it. You just determine that after this many adventures, you're going to go up a level. Maybe it's one at the beginning, maybe it's two later on, three, four, whatever. Or fulfilling certain missions can drive that forward quicker. But in the most part, everyone just goes up at a fixed rate per the adventures you're running. That gives people more leeway to role play their characters without having to worry about killing monsters. The problem is there's kind of nothing out there for that spot in the middle. I really enjoy the concept of being able to do more with the role playing than to just sort of like, okay, I'm 40 points short, let's go mug some thieves in town so I can get another 40 XP. That's not what you want. You want people being focused a lot on the story. Whether it's your game or whether it's a module you're using, it's still always better when there's great interaction to the story, to the role-playing background, and to all the color 
that is there in the game. That's what makes all these games great. All the things you watch on the streaming are fabulous because of the interaction of the players with what's going on in the game. The killing of the creatures often is kind of boring. I mean, sitting there watching people roll dice, not so exciting. And it may be fun for you while you're doing it, but as an observer, I find it kind of really duller than dishwater to watch people actually roll the dice, determine the damage, and then watch the countdown. Much different when you're playing. In a situation where you're trying to keep the level of interest and excitement up, you want more of that story. Now, how do you reward characters for doing that? First of all, you can't penalize characters for not doing it. You always should come up with a baseline of experience, what you get for creating creatures, and killing them is one thing. For fulfilling a mission, you get X amount of experience. For failing a mission, you might get even more experience sometimes, but leads you into a more negative future adventure that is more dangerous or more interesting or drives you away from what you plan to do and having you do maybe more nefarious things, really challenge the character's motivation and morality. But I think this is all part of the story. The character should develop as your game goes on. But the development should be in the characterization. The levels should be in many ways irrelevant. The good game might be at low level, it might be at high level, but what you want is a constant level of players coming and giving you their best role-playing experience and their best out there in the game. And the way to reward that is give people bonuses for doing heroic role-playing things. Magical items can be given out by somebody who does something for a lord, and now the lord feels, hey, I trust this hero. I'm willing to give you this magical sword, artifact of my family for a usage for you to go on this adventure and slay the bad guy and then return it to us, both gaining honor for you and bringing more honor to my family because you've used the family weapon. So many things can happen because you can interact with players who give you role-playing options to do that. Be creative in it. Think about it. If players do something heroic, give them a heroic reward. Maybe it's some level of title or notoriety. Maybe it's some castle or some place that they get that now they're responsible for people, but it comes with other secrets and other places like uh, a cadre of magical items that are maybe there that can be used for different adventures. There's so many things you can do as a DM to make your games more interesting. You want them to role play. So reward them from role play. It is not uncommon at the end of a campaign to go to a situation saying you got 400 points for slaying creatures, you got 300 to 500 points for fulfilling the mission, and you guys over here get bonuses for fantastic role play, but get them involved in your game. Now, if they don't, you know, and maybe they're not as good at it, but maybe they do something else. They run your initiative tray, or maybe they paint beautiful miniatures and bring them to your game. Maybe they come along and they, they do art. All these things add to your game. Like Matt Coville did for me, maybe they blog your game and suddenly they feed back tons of motivation to you so that you're excited about your own campaign. It isn't drudgery now to write the next story. It isn't difficult to come up with a new concept. They've created an interesting character that challenges you to do something more interesting in your game. Reward them for this. Reward them in even larger amounts than you might for just killing creatures. Because to figure things out and find a mission and secretly dig through traps, go through adventures, rescue people, do things that the game may not give you any experience point for, is a failure in gameplay. It is up to you to reward them for thinking outside of the box and coming up with really creative and interesting ideas to make your game and your campaign better and more interesting. And I think you'll be happier by doing this. And I think your players will too. Remember, if they're not into the funny voices, don't let them do the voices. Don't have to do that. But ask them to help you out. 
Ask them to come up with ideas. Maybe they come up with things that they want to do. This is sort of the concept of the players driving the story. Now, that's not new. It's been used before, but often players feel uncomfortable with that. What you want to do is let them drive you with ideas. You design the story based upon how they're presenting their character. Now, Matt Mercer does something really great. He data mines player characters' backstories, then introduces things in his campaign that are based upon the history that their characters have presented. Now, we've done that a lot in games over the decades. The idea is you utilize what the characters are giving you as their story to give them motivation to keep going on and living the life of this character and thusly expanding their role-playing background, not just open the door, kill the monsters, take the magic, give me the treasure. Thanks a lot. I'll see you next week. Challenge your players to give you more. You'll find that that is what makes your games more stimulating for the players and most truthfully, more stimulating for me. This is how I'm able to DM game after game for decades. That's because I've had really excellent players. And excellent players bring you excellent role playing. Now, sometimes they're not always excellent. Sometimes you get them in a bad mood and they're just pissy and they grump about the rules. That's going to happen. But the vast majority of the things that are going to happen in your role playing games are going to be positive. And the more you give them opportunities to have positive interaction with you, the less likely they're going to grump about the rules, whatever the story is in the grump. It's often because the players aren't getting the satisfaction they're hoping for in the game feedback from you. And that's up to you. Give them more. There's no law that says at the end of adventure, you can say, well, you know, you guys didn't kill anything, but man, you did it with such great panache that the Lord is thrilled and you guys get a thousand XP for fabulous gameplay. Players are going to be stunned. But the thing is, it's going to make their game better. Because now, it's just not open the door, kill monsters, get treasure, get my XP. It's now, we have to be creative. And that creativity will make your games fabulous. Eventually, you'll become the renowned Game Master. Now, I talk to people about gaming constantly because one thing, I don't want you to be as good as me. I want you to be way better. I was a good game master for a lot of years, and a lot of people learned from me and have now exceeded me in my role-playing skills, and that's what I want. A lot of people I taught to paint are better painters. A lot of people who, you know, look at all of it in game design and anything else are better because of the people that came before. That's your job. Set a legacy that people can live up to, but more than live up to, can expand beyond. And that's the point. You want this game to be better and better every year. In many cases, the game is always improving. Sometimes the improvement is going to be in the eye of the beholder, and someone like me may look at it and go, yeah, that's not an improvement. But everybody else looks at it and says, wow, it's fabulous, so eh, maybe I'm wrong. But the point for you is make a game that is challenging to players on many different levels, not just who made the most broken character at killing monsters. I had a guys who play my War Robots game with me, and we got on a little live chat today talking about Dungeons and Dragons, and he's been playing for 40 years. And he generated a character that I thought was hilarious. He generated a character who came to a village in the outskirts of the world as a thief to figure out how to fleece all these people out of their gold. So he decided the way to do that was to become the village priest. And he has no clerical ability. He's not really a cleric, but he picks up the book and he starts memorizing some of the words so he can sound like a cleric. And then they go into adventures and he's the cleric. Now, strange things happen. As he mumbles the word, the God seems to be listening and working within him to actually make his spells work and his clerical healing and abilities to go. He's mystified. He doesn't know what to make of it. It makes no sense to him trying to figure out how to be priestly when he's not. Now, that's what you want to reward for good role play. It's a fun way to have the character step up and everyone else in his game is enjoying his characters sort of fumbling around as a priest. But more importantly, they're generating their own ideas of how to make their characters more interesting as well. And that's what you want. Everybody's enjoying the game. 
Everybody's trying to make the campaign better. And the best thing that drives for a good game master is happy players who are making your game better, both in their mind and in yours. And when you sit down the next week and you are super motivated to run your next adventure because you want to bring forth something new and interesting to the campaign that's going to challenge these players, they've provided you with that palette to paint these pictures and they're going to eat up all the stories you give them and feed back to you a better campaign than you could have ever created just on your own. Let them expand your mind, expand your campaign, and then free yourself up to give players more rewards for all the different things that make your games better. Now, I know this is a lot to maybe chew on, but think about it. The idea is don't get boxed in to what rules tell you. It'll be fun to see what happens either way. So until we have a chance to speak again, fight me devils fight, for everyone knows I hate peace. Game on.